Namaste. Hi. The Baddha Padmasana, or the Binding Lotus Position, is a powerful physical technique for increasing the energy levels in the Manipura Chakra, where generally, commonly, the absorption there is low, because we're utilizing you know, most of our energy there for, for digestion, nutrient absorption, you know, elimination, the functions of the body in general. And then by increasing the digestive fire you know, flowing through that region, we also pave way for the purification of the nadis, particularly the ida, the left, and the pingala and the right channels. And this paves way for yeah, the opening and the awakening, yeah, so to speak, of the shushumna nadi. Unless these two sides are balanced and open, the shushumna nadi won't open as well. All right, so the reason being in the Badabad Masana, we're using actually, aside from the binding legs, the pressure coming from the heels yeah, and leaning forward, and the heel yeah, yeah, irrigates and then uh, presses and massages the nerve clusters and the organs located in the core region. All right, so the Padabad, Padapadmasana is. An advanced one, yeah, if the Padmasana, this one is already advanced, yeah, the Bada Padmasana is even yeah, more challenging. So you need to learn this first and to be able to sustain this without uh, experiencing yeah, pressure and pain, the knee, and the lower back in general. All right, the Bada Padmasana is we're binding our arms behind us. All right, so the top leg will go first, yeah. And then grabbing hold of that foot, see? Yeah, it has to be a firm grip. And then you might lightly flex your toes to create stability. And a mild twist towards yeah, that opposite side so you can yeah, move the spine around as well as the joints yeah, surrounding yeah, your shoulders and your hips. And then from there, the other arm follows. Breathing in, yeah, you might roll this arm around a few times and out the back. All right. Yeah, it's the same uh, amount of pressure or uh, grit and intensity. All right, and if you notice, yeah, so the knees would have to move to the midline. That's very important for stability of your sacralumbar spine. Yeah, so they don't open wide. All right, and then make sure that the heel is not pressing against the bone of the ribs, rather towards yeah, the fleshy part of the lower abdomen region. And then the top heel now, yeah, will rest there, and then you might lightly adjust. Sometimes I will lean to the side so I can open the spine, and up to the center, and the other side. Now breathing in, chest opens. Good. Exhale, loosen. Now, every time you attempt to go forward or lower, inhale to lengthen the spine. And exhale, down. All right. Until such time, yeah, that, let me just adjust backwards so you can still see me. Because the moment I place my head on the ground, my angle is short of the camera. Yeah. Inhaling. And exhaling, inhale, open, exhale, loosen. All right, and in here you will already feel the pressure. All right. You might lightly rub the heel there, side to side, and until such time that you can yeah, beautifully and comfortably and lightly yeah, lower your head down the floor. Good. And then here you may rub the shoulders around, and then you may move your hips backwards and then just staying here good allowing the pressure coming from the heel to massage that part of your body good keep the shoulders moving away from the rest of your upper back yeah sometimes you may rub the shoulders around to create more space so you can move the spine away from the shoulders and then activate the shoulders slightly by lifting them up towards the back plane, up and towards the back. Yeah. And settle. And here, breathe so mindfully that you can feel the pressure of the breath intensify the level of massage and pressure 
you experience in that point. And exhale out. Breathing in. You might hold the gentle come back at the top. Exhale, easy. All right. And then we try to gaze towards the eyebrow center. Yeah, with your eyes closed like a gentle Shambhavi Mudra. Yeah, or you can lift forward and then lightly gaze to the front, yeah, between the eyebrows. Yeah, but don't strain the neck. It's more of yeah, a gentle neck lift. All right, to come up. Yeah, breathing in, forward. Exhale to settle. Good. And then you can reposition your hips. All right. Sometimes I would lean towards the top knee. Yeah. And I will turn the spine to that direction. And the head falls to that direction. This feels really good for yeah, the opposite side of the body. And then up. Good. And center. Of course. And then unbind. Exhale. And then release the legs. And then you may give your legs some light shaking and flipping around. All right. A combination I do after the Vadapud Masana is the Kandasana. And so from there, now we we'll just loosen a bit like that and circle around. Or sometimes I will flow and just shake the legs out. Good. And I will try to practice the Kandasana, because the Kandasana, you know what it does, yeah, it further opens yeah, the hip region, yeah. not open, loosen, but open the inner linings of the hips, yeah. so I can pave way for um, more energy flowing from the Kandanadi, which includes the bottom regions or bottom uh, nerve clusters, the Muladhara Chakra, yeah, the Shadishtana, yeah, the Kandanadi encompasses the whole of the pelvic cavity. Good. And breathing here. Good. To release, and breathing in, exhale out, Good. cross the legs, give him a light shake, a bit of a side to side, and then